two, one. one. Why are you doing a countdown? I don't know. Okay. I'm just kind of making fun of Jeff to begin with. Okay. Okay. Right. You're already name dropping. <laughs> this isn't going to go on the air. Oh, okay. No, it's going to start now. Right. Hey right there, now. true believers. This is... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Okay. Right now. Okay. Now. Hey there, true believers. This is James Heyer. We're hosting our very first show. Uh, today we have a special guest, my former co-worker and good friend, Enrique Ramirez. Hello. I didn't know we were good friends. I thought we were just friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's professional. Okay. okay. We'll keep it professional. <laughs> really, we hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what we do on the show is um, we take uh, published fan mail written to Marvel Comics and we read and discuss them. See, basically, the internet is a uh, fertile nesting ground for terrible, dumb ideas, and I think we have room for this one. Is so. there, I, my question is, when you first told me about this, is um, my first question was, why are you reading the fan mail? Because in comic books, that's like the thing I gloss over, because that's just, normally it's just like, oh, you're so great, and this comic book's great, and I love you. But I haven't read the older ones yet, but so I'm I'm along for the ride. This this will, this will be the first time I hear these. Oh really? Yeah, okay. So well, they're actually they're in a way they're actually better than the comics themselves. <laughs> like they are so out there. Like in a way, what's really interesting about these from the '60s? Um, what really strikes me is how good all these writers are that are writing it. And I know they're picking the best, the, obviously, a uh, fan mail. But I almost feel like maybe Stanley was just writing these himself. Because <laughs> they almost all talk. Maybe this is the way kids talked in the 60s. I don't know. But they almost all sound like Stanley. Like, it's really weird. <laughs> the other thing I have to apologize up front is I'm kind of a newer comic book nerd. Really? Like, in, like I did a little bit in school, but not, like, hardcore stuff. And now I'm starting to get back into it. I've... We hardly read any of the older stuff that we're going to touch upon. Oh, really? So, like, so this is going to be a treat for me. And we did the research we I did with you. Is some of the premises you told me were just wow. Yeah. And, the, and the, this comic book's still around after yeah. that, that last <laughs> issue is ridiculous. Well, the thing is, the thing is, and I actually like as dumb as these stories were in the '60s. Like, and they are dumb. Um, there's just something about Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. Steve Ditko. I mean, these guys like like the stuff that they wrote and drew is just iconic. I mean, I think, I think that that old stuff. Once those guys started leaving, um, you know, I mean, that was their projects. Right. Like these guys that are writing now. I mean, this isn't their creation, mm -hmm. and I mean, especially Marvel with DC. DC can still kind of um, reinvent themselves, and they do all the time, and they usually do a pretty good job. With Marvel, I really think that they've kind of, they've had a much harder fall as far as, um, <laughs> as far as um, quality is concerned than right. DC. Right. But, um, so which were you, um, I know you had a few comics when you were younger, and really when I was younger, um, I was, you know, I, I was kind of the same way. I liked comics when I was a kid, but believe it or not, I actually got more into them in college because mm -hmm. by high school I was done right I liked them in elementary school I was reading spider-man in middle school but it was terrible right. that was the clone saga <laughs> we don't want to talk about that but um, by high school I was done and um, really I think what got me back into them in college was um, you know, there were there were the Spider Man movies, which were really the right. first two at least right. were really good movies, and that they both the first one came out I think when I was a senior in high school, and then the second one came out when I was a sophomore in college, and um, I really loved it. Mm -hmm. And then also there were what got me into it though was um, and maybe this was high school I don't know, but uh, um, when I started finding they called them the essentials. Mm -hmm. which were the original stories. They were black and white reprints. Right. So they'd have like issue one through, or issue one through 20 um, in one book of Spider-Man. And um, I read those and they were just like, they just blew my mind. They were so much better. And Spider-Man is the cream of the crop from mm -hmm. the 60s, but they were just so much better than, uh, than the stuff that 
I was reading in the 90s, you know, I mean, it, it, it just blew my mind, and I just kind of, and it started as a Spider-Man thing, and then it just kind of spiraled out of control. And these movies has kind of helped, too. Right, right. No, I agree with you, because that's, when I was a kid, you know, I didn't have a, my parents didn't, you know, I didn't live by a comic book shop, my parents didn't drive me there because, you know, I begged them to, they just wouldn't do it. Every once in a while, they would, so... You know, for 20 minutes, I got to run inside the comic book shop and just picked out what kind of looked cool. And I'd pick up, uh, you know, Daredevil or Punisher, you know, Spider-Man, the occasional Spider-Man, um, Silver Surfer. You know, I picked up a few of those. I'm trying to think of what else I got. And I'd find older ones like Star Wars. We, we saw the, the, the Marvel Star Wars ones. I've got a few of those. Uh, but not until recently when I think when me, you, and Schaefer started becoming closer friends, we picked up on the new 52 from DC, and that's when I realized, and all the campy stuff was gone. It was a lot more mm -hmm. serious tone, a lot, you know, people like us writing the comic books yeah. now, not just for kids. They were for uh, kids our age, kids, yeah. at, kids at heart. And um, so I've been collecting really on a weekly basis since the new 52 came out, and every once in a while I'll go to our comic book shop, Prairie Dog, and I'll see something new each time. It's like, oh wow, and this is the the, the art's awesome on the, the mm -hmm. stuff I pick. I'm re I'm really into Batman and Walking Dead right now. Yeah, just because I always had a fascination with zombies. I don't know what it is, but just you know, like most of us, like I mean, in in actuality, if the zombie apocalypse would happen, I'd be the biggest pussy and wouldn't want anything <laughs> be anywhere near a, a zombie. But I like reading about it. Yeah, and the new Batman stuff. I've always been fascinated and intrigued with Batman. Um, because he didn't have superpowers, you know, all that, that that good stuff. He's just a smart guy, and, you know, the will to do good and keep fighting. So, you know, which one? Uh, speaking of the new Fifty Two, the one that really um, surprised me. I, I really liked like um, the Flash and all them, but the one that really surprised me was Wonder Woman. Really, like those are really good. Um, <laughs> they have them drawn in almost kind of this old uh, this it. Not really, but it's kind of styled after like old Greek drawings in a yeah, way. Like yeah. it, it's pretty neat. I, I kind of like that. Um, but um, Aquaman also, Jeff Johns has been doing oh, yeah. that. And e everything Jeff Johns touches <laughs> turns to gold, of course. Like he's, he like, you know, but uh, and Aquaman's kind of an underrated hero. I mean, granted, if it were, if I had a choice between him and Namor, the Submariner, <laughs> I'd choose the Submariner. <laughs> Any day of the week, right. but um, now Aquaman is a little bit underrated. Um, I just I mean, don't think he's found his true voice yet. I, no. I think that's hopefully will happen. You know, on a level where you know, as, as Batman as popular as he is, and you know, Spider Man and all those guys. Well, you know, you'd think. Here's what gets me: like, like Marvel, like they're coming out with these movies, like just left, and the quality. You know, I, I know we had a few bad ones like Daredevil and Fantastic Four, but the quality, especially in recent years with these Avengers movies, has been pretty high. Oh, like, these yeah. have been really good yeah. movies. Meanwhile, DC, all they can come out with is Batman and one bat, which have been really good, right. and one bat, eh, I'm not going to say bad, but a lackluster <laughs> Superman movie and a a bad Green Lantern. Green Lantern was bad. Yeah, I, 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 it's one of those movies where I can't watch again. The Batman movies I can watch over and over Green Lantern, I, I think I was cleaning the house and watching I it was, while I was in the background. I was so disappointed. You know, what's funny, that was the year that uh, Captain America and Thor <laughs> came out, and X-Men, yeah. and I thought that Green Lantern was going to be the best one. Uh, Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I, I blame Ryan Reynolds. Uh, people will disagree with me, but I blame him. Oh, I didn't like him. He's terrible. Yeah. He's, uh, he definitely didn't help that movie. Um, <laughs> I, what's funny is, though, even that movie, like, as bad as that is, it's still better than uh, Fantastic Four. Yeah. It's yeah. still better, I'd say it's better than Daredevil. Whenever I start to think that Daredevil wasn't so bad, I always remember that scene with Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner fighting in the, <laughs> in the, um, the playground. playground. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like, oh yeah, that movie was as bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's just one of those movies where it's like, if it, even if it's on FX, I, I might watch, I, I, I will watch it. Yeah. Uh, you know, the worst one though is, um, Ghost Rider. Yeah. <sighs> I, have you seen the, the the last one that came out? No, <laughs> have you? No, it was in Redbox, and I almost got it, and I was like, because I re oh, that's the other one I clicked is Ghost Rider. I've got a, a bunch of Ghost Riders. Yeah, and so I really I'm really waiting for that really good Ghost Rider movie, which I will believe along with the Punisher 
will not happen. Yeah. That will that movie will just never happen where we're like it's just you know on the level of like the Avengers or Batman it just won't happen. I think I think there is a possibility that there could be a good Daredevil movie in the future. Like I mean, because the source material is that good, and all you got to do is rip off Batman. Yeah. I mean, how take hard away could his eyes, take yeah. away sight, take away sight. Same thing. I mean, because I mean, I mean, Daredevil was a really good comic. And actually, I'm not a Ben Affleck hater by any means. Oh, no. I hate, no. That. I hate that word. But I mean, I'm not a Ben Affleck. Because uh, you're not a 17-year-old girl. Yeah. But, I mean, the thing is, with him, like, I do think that he was kind of miscast. Like, well, his it's damn It's daredevil, chin. like a small, smaller guy. He's a yeah. smaller guy. He's a little wiry kind of. Kind of, yeah. Um, I would think, like, a Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I'm yeah, starting to like him more and more. Yeah, I am, day. too. Um, but I would think he'd be a good cast. The, and, you know, that costume, when you have a guy with a chin that big, and he's in really good shape in that movie, mm-hmm. but cool the Liberace. costume... Yeah, I know. I said, <laughs> but that costume makes... And his chin makes him look fat. Yeah. And he's not, but it's just and like... he looked boxy. Like, he wasn't... Yeah. He's supposed, Daredevil was supposed to be on the level of, like, a Spider-Man yeah. type, I would think. Yeah. Okay. Like, well, Spider-Man's really skinny. But right, yeah, right. But, you know, like an older guy, you know, jumping from building to building in a huge yeah. city, he, he should be a little wiry. Yeah, I don't think. I this, think so. Ben Affleck was too boxy. and. Yeah. But really, he was not the problem with that movie. So, like, yeah. we're going on like he is, and he certainly <laughs> was not. I'm surprised um, we're dedicating time to talking about it. Jeez. Also, oh, I, that does kind of go back to the point, uh, the original point, which is um, why are... You know, why are the these Marvel movies, they're all owned, you know, the rights to them are all owned by different companies. Like, Disney's kind of getting more and more of them. But even the right. Hulk uh, was owned, I think, I'm not 100% sure. I know they were owned by Universal. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if, he, after Avengers, if he still is or not. But, you know, you know you've got Spider-Man, which is owned by Sony, which... You know, if Sony could relinquish them once and for all, like, get a good company like Disney to own them, that'd be great. Right, right. But, you know, I mean, because even, like, the newest Spider-Man wasn't very good, but it's still, like, an okay movie. It's just right, unnecessary. Right. Whereas DC, they're all owned by Warner. Why can't they make these movies? Like, like why can't they make a Flash movie? Why can't they right. make a Wonder Woman movie? I mean, like, these are very well-known characters. Yeah. I think they'd bring in some money. I would I would think it would just be that they're still kind of seeing what Marvel's doing, because after all, this long, I think. Well, I think, you, know, you know they're sinking a lot of money. You know, it's a lot of money to make a movie. like that. I think that. the problem is, and other it, than Batman, they haven't done a good because right. I mean, Superman Returns wasn't very good, right. and I mean, well, I've got high hopes for this next one. Like, I do every movie. superhero movie, but we'll see. I do. I do too. I do too. I mean, I I'm not a hundred percent. Actually, the movie that I think will be awesome is uh, Iron Man 3. I did. That, I have never I have never felt so confident about a movie based off one trailer in <laughs> a long time right. cuz like that trailer was awesome. Oh yeah. Um, usually cuz even like it. a little bit well even like Dark Knight Returns um, the trailers like they were good but it was like man Bane's voice sounds kind of stupid and yeah. uh, I don't know about Catwoman's um I'm still on the fence about that movie. I just I like I, it. I, I, I like, like it, it but it's it, not It uh, took me a couple times to get to it. get into yeah. it. I like it. It's not as good as um here's the deal. It's still the best um superhero trilogy. <laughs> like you've got that in Spider-Man. Right. Which I mean Spider-Man 3's a doozy. Yeah. So I mean you're the Spider-Man expert here. Uh, you're. The, how many times did you see it? Yo, we don't need to go into that. I saw. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. Yeah, we'll talk about that some other time. I was really in denial with that. Like, I wanted to. I really wanted to like that movie, but yeah. Oh God. Well, anyway, um, let's go ahead and get started on this fan mail. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that what we're doing? Yes, okay. um, because this is. Yeah, this is what our show is, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but um, what we're uh, what we're going over is um, we'll be reading mail from uh, Fantastic Four issue number twenty six, which uh, was um, published in nineteen sixty four. Good year. Yes, it was a good year. Um, okay, dear Stan and Jack. 
I thought the return of the Mole Man in FF number 22 and the master plan of Doctor Doom in FF 23 were smashing, and the Spider-Man stories are better than ever. X-Men and the Avengers are marvelous, and I especially like Iron Man's new costume. I have not been able to find many Iron Man stories in England. Oh, he's British. Uh -oh. But, but I bought the first Giant Man story, and I think he is great. Really? <laughs> I'm going to have to disagree <laughs> with you there. Um, he's English. I, yeah. I also uh, bought a Strange Tales comic, and it had Doctor Strange in it. I think he is one of the best characters you have created. The X-Men are getting to be as good as the Fantastic Four. I have not, I have not a favorite X, I have not a favorite X-Men because I like them all. Uh, the Avengers fight with Submariner and the Hulk was even better than some of the FF's fights, and I hope their next adventure will be as good as this one. I don't think anyone could surpass the quality of your comics, and I am, uh, excuse me, and I think that this certainly is the Marvel Age of Comics. Oh. Written by John Davidson, Hallow... Willowfield Road in Newcastle on Tyne in England. Okay, here's the response. And let's see if I can read it. We're reading it off a piece of paper. We yeah, printed. we printed this. And that's why we say there will always be an England. Thanks, Johnny boy. <laughs> we admire your judgment. <laughs> That's Stan, right? I'm assuming. Actually, I bet it's Stan's intern. But... Right. <laughs> He's probably up right, late one night doing heroin. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Stan walks in. Respond to these. Well, I really like how uh, this limey over here... <laughs> Like he's going on about Giant Man, or like Giant Man's pretty obscure. Do you know who he is? I, vaguely. Well, he's also Ant Man. Okay. He's also Yellow Jacket, and he's also Goliath. Like <laughs> this poor he's bastard. like the worst. He he really is. And I know on the Avengers cartoon they made him into a really likable guy. That's great. In the original comics, he was the worst. It was Ant Man and the Wasp, who was his girlfriend, who oh, he treated God. like crap. And then, like, they realized <laughs> Ant Man was lame, so they added two letters and named him Giant Man. Oh. <laughs> and so all he did was treat the Wasp like crap, and he was just like this, just the worst hero ever, until finally in the 80s. Well, he gets physically abusive with her, and they kick him out of the Avengers, <laughs> which would Bound be kind of a which would be like that's a great way to get rid of your character, I guess. <laughs> but of course, like somebody in the '90s was like, uh, "Let's let's bring uh, Ant Man back. He can he can get back with uh, Wasp because they were such a great couple, and you know we'll make more money doing this." And it's like he kind of hit her in her face. Yeah. But, uh, okay, I guess I guess that's what we do now. Wow. We just get them back together. I feel like it just nothing happened. It was a, it was a dream. <laughs> it was a dream comic that one. Uh, now, how old do you think this guy is that wrote this? Is, is, you think this is an older guy that? I bet he's college or probably college. College because sometimes they say they're in their ages when they write these. Why? Well, well, you think back in the '60s, you know, now there's nerds everywhere. Yeah, that love, love comic books. Back then, you, you know, you, you've heard interviews with Stan Lee about them struggling to, you know, make ends meet, make, you know, just put a, a comic book out at whatever, however often they did. I mean, these people are writing in. How, who is this guy? I just, just See, that's why it's writing, so fascinating, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> like, where did this guy come from? And he's, he read the comic book and loved it so much that he wrote in. Because, that he, yeah. 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 That's why... These stories need to be told. The public <laughs> needs to hear these. Because, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's that's the thing. I'm just like mesmerized by these things because it's like, who are these people? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, especially, I mean, like you said, especially in the '60s, like these nerd forums. Like now, you can just go online. And, oh yeah. But these nerd forums were. Hell, you can throw a rock and find a nerd forum somewhere. Of course, I don't know. I didn't live in the '60s. Maybe they were more rampant than we hear about but right. like um you know i do know um what's interesting um yeah this isn't interesting but uh <laughs> i do know that like in the 40s um during world world war ii uh, a lot of the gis overseas they were the ones picking up oh. and reading comics a lot back then okay because you know Give the give our kids comics and cigarettes and <laughs> they'll die for our country. Yay. You know, that sort of thing. 
Well, would you like to read the next one? Sure, I will. All right. Let's see what we got here. There we go. Oh, boy, this is small writing. Yeah. This one starts out as, Dear Stan and Jack, look, look, you have everybody called Laughing Boy, so let's have less of this, uh, bub, Laughing Boys. By the way, how are you planning to change Thor? <laughs> You've changed everybody else these days, so I figured you might change Thor. Now, my last question, why not get rid of Doctor Strange and put, him, put in his place the Hulk? It would add something to your mags. Owen Bolin <laughs> from Philadelphia. He says here he's 24. Um, wow, well, I agree with the Hulk. I'd like to see more Hulk, but I don't know. Yeah, well, that'll Doctor take a few years. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't exactly. get super popular until like a couple years later. But It's the hair. <laughs> here's, here's the response. Sure, it would add another problem for us. Where would, you, where would we put Doctor Strange, right? <laughs> Laughing boy. <laughs> What's Laughing Boy? Uh, that's actually really funny. Uh, they do, everybody in these comics do call everyone else Laughing Boy. Like, Hawkeye. Like, is it insult? Hawk, yeah, Hawkeye will be like attacking Dr. Doom and, hey, here's an arrow, Laughing Boy. <laughs> and Spider Man punches Doc Ock and calls him Laughing Boy. Like, seriously, like in these 60s, like, they, he had like one or two insults that he would just use all the time. Laughing Boy. And one of my other favorites wow. is. Um, uh, one that he used, and I don't think he knew what this terminology was, but he tends to use the phrase sloppy seconds. <laughs> but he thinks that... We know what that means. Well, apparently he doesn't because, um, <laughs> like, like uh, Reed Richards will beat up somebody and then uh, the thing will be like, I don't want your sloppy seconds, as if, like, I don't want to beat the, up the guy you just beat up. Or, you, you know, I just thought about it. Maybe that's just like, up. maybe they all just get off on beating up people. So <laughs> maybe maybe the term works. But yeah, Laughing Boy, um, if you start reading some of these, you'll see Laughing yeah, Boy everywhere. Like, it's really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, did it ever come out that Stanley was on drugs? I don't know, actually. Um, or was this Laughing Boys, like, do you think he had a teacher that was a bully and... I think that I think that he had like I think that he had um I think what it really is is that he had like twenty fucking magazines coming out in a month <laughs> yeah. and he just had to churn this shit out yeah. like like he as was quickly a comic book as machine. possible. Well, and you know you know what the Marvel method or was it was it called the Marvel Mat method, I think, is mm -hmm. where um is where basically um Jack Kirby does all the work and Stan gets all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sweet Like, game. that's basically what it, like, or, or Steve Ditko. Uh, like, uh, there was a Spider-Man where Steve Ditko wrote about the Marvel, drew a, drew a thing about the Marvel <laughs> method, which is just like Stan waking up and calling <laughs> Steve in the middle of the night. Jeez. <laughs> well, you know this more than me. Like, today, <clears throat> you know, I pick up a Batman or something. There's like eight names on it of people that worked on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the the old days, so so to speak, like on these comic books that we're um, looking at now, uh, is it what, j just Jack and Stan? No, there's there usually four. There was, four. Um, there would be a, um, you've got the writer and editor, which is usually just Stan. Then you've got the uh, artist, which would be Jack Kirby or Steve, D usually Jack Kirby. Steve Ditko pretty much just, just did Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have the penciler. Um, Sounds like a Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Artie Simak was always the penciler, or maybe he was the inker. I can't remember offhand. And so then you have an inker. The inker was the one, of course, who colored. Artie Simak was the penciler. He was the one who, like, drew all the, who wrote everything. Okay. And, like, you know, like. Right, right. Like, no, there's yeah. a style to. Like Stan might have wrote it, but like you have to have like a calligraphy type right, style right. when you write in comics. No, I get you. So it's usually four, sometimes more if they had more than one uh, writer or artist. But See, kids, we're learning a lot today. I know. <laughs> All right, next mail. Uh, Dear Stan and Jack, you've done it. In one year, you've made me change from one brand of comics to your own Marvel comics. I think yours are better because, one, the figures are realistic and the artwork is great, 
and two, you have the best characters ever. <laughs> oh. Is he talking about Ant-Man? Oh, here's a, yeah. Their costumes are great, and their powers are realistic. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so Hulk's realistic now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, my favorite comic is, of course, the FF, because they're realistic, right? Right, right. And secondly, Spider-Man. Hope to keep printing till the end of the earth. <laughs> wow. And, and as you say, see you next-ish. Alan Backer, 574 East 92nd Street. Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. Oh, I should have been talking like this. See you Brooklyn next ish. Ish. I don't think people from Brooklyn talk like that. See you next ish. I, I bet he got beat up. Yeah. Brooklyn. This is a nerd. This, we have to remember this is a nerd, not like some. Uh, this guy's like a crazed fanboy, it sounds like. <laughs> the first couple of sentences in your letter sounded like a TV cigarette commercial. Wow. <laughs> That's from Stan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're the brand X of the Mac business. <laughs> they're the better. They're the. <laughs> they're the better cigarette brand. I guess. Wow. <laughs> These are some of the weirdest. I. <laughs> okay. This next one is from Lane Hartman in Del Delano, California. He writes, Dear Stan and Jack, I would be willing to bet that sooner or later you will have to hire more artists and inkers. We just talked about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> just to keep up with the high standards of the Marvel Comics group. On the letters on the letters page in FF23, you state, if we ever put our pans on the cover of... What the hell? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I, Okay, next time we're getting a computer for this. Yeah. If we ever put... Our pans on the cover of any mags, we'd scare them all away. Well, well, here is what I think of you. You're saying things like that. I will send you the camera and the film and the price of develop, developing the film, if I have to, to get a picture of the staff at 655 Madison Avenue. I'm not kidding one bit. Wow, this guy's psycho. I know. I want to see your <laughs> face so I know who to stab when I walk up behind you. <laughs> He's got love knife written all over this. God. Why don't you just come out and like, can I see what you look like so I can stab you and take your blood? <laughs> um, here's, here's what is written back. Take warning, we intend to plaster some pics of our pans in the FF Annual Number 2 on sale this summer. Oh, he never takes, he always a sells. He's always trying to sell shit, isn't he? Is he isn't he. Yeah. <laughs> it may set comics back a few hundred years. Wow. That was, a, that was from Lane Hartman. I wonder if he's in jail now. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I really do. Psycho. You know, think about how many of these people are dead from old age. Like, this is 1964. Yeah. Like, how, how long ago is that? It's 50. Yeah. So these people would be oh. like 70. Oh, jeez. Good God. Good God oh. Almighty. <laughs> I wonder if they're still writing into comic books. <laughs> You know, another thing we should do is I'm looking through it. The ads, uh, one of these oh, things the will go on. The, the ads are fucking hilarious. Yeah. Like, we, we should spend an episode going over them. Sometime. Oh, yeah. Just look at, what's this one on this issue? It's called, what's... Boys, men, I'll help you master Yubawasa. <laughs> Yubawasa. Yubawasa is the secret, amazingly easy art of self-defense that turns just one finger or your hand into a potent weapon of defense without any bodily contact. That is some weird shit. Oh, well, that didn't if take off, did so it? So what? Without bodily, like, don't I have to touch you? Isn't that bodily? Maybe contact? just like if you. Like, In just two hours after you receive Yubiwasa. You will be on your way to being an invincible Yubiwasa master. At home, this fast, easy picture way, you know, at, at home, this fast, easy picture way, I think or we should it take, costs you we nothing. We should practice reading some of these before we start. Dude, this, this I think that's a typo. <laughs> <laughs> easy picture way. What the fuck? Oh, my God. 
I wish and then we could this, show the then picture. this, then this, yeah. Well, we we could on YouTube. Yeah, because um, he's got a. It's a guy who looks like a pedophile. Yeah. And then there's this Asian chick who says, "I weigh only 98 pounds, yet I can paralyze a 200 pound attacker with just a finger, because I know Yubiwasa." Yubiwasa says Yoshi Iminami, pretty Japanese wife of New Jersey Fleming. <laughs> Wow. Care. You be Wasa Master. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a pretty wife of the uh, New Jersey You be Wasa uh -huh. Master. Wow. <laughs> you, be, you be Wasi get your ass in the hospital trying, to, trying that shit on something. <laughs> uh, dude, I'm going to Google that These later. ads, oh, I swear to God, these the ads that they used to have in magazines and, and uh, comics were just like, everything was an absolute... Uh, fraud. Uh, just everything was like <laughs> yeah. a total rip off. Well, what like, was that? Sea monkeys and all that. Yeah, shit. sea monkeys yeah. and like it shows like these like monkeys like playing basketball or yeah. something and and they're just what buying shrimp. I, <coughs> did you ever? Did you, we get at parties? Go to parties and somebody would always have sea monkeys and we dare each other to eat them. <laughs> yeah. The drunkest guy would always do it <laughs> and get really. It sounds like sick. fun. It wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't. Oh, man. Speaking of drunk. <laughs> God. Oh, man. I do love drinking. Uh, let's go for another. Uh, Dear Stan and Jack. Oh, this one is from Daryl Rothermick of Missouri School of Mines. <laughs> Mimes or mines? Mines. M-I-N-E-S. Like they, they go to a school to make mines for the war? I guess. Uh, my first introduction to you was your great FF magazine. My collection does include all of FF, all Spider-Man, Human Torch, X-Men, Hulk, Avengers, Iron Man, Thor, and several Giant Man issues. <laughs> like, he's not going to go all the way on Giant <laughs> Just a couple. Let's not get crazy. I'm not a psycho. I wouldn't trade these for 10,000 of any others. <laughs> Without a doubt, FF, X-Men, and Spider-Man are the three greatest magazines on the market. In FF number 22, Jack Kirby did his usual artwork. Excellent. <laughs> Stan handled the return of the villain from your worst issue remarkably well. Now that Sue has been uh, given traditional powers, has been given additional powers, excuse me, don't keep her on the sidelines. Iron Man hit a record high in Tales of Suspense, number 49. The art and story were both excellent. I also enjoy The Watcher and hope you have some more similar stories. Here at college, it is wonderful to relax from my studies and read your magazines. My, roommates, my roommate had never read your mags before, but now is as much of a fan as I am. Thanks for many hours of enjoyment. Nice. So right there, a college student. Yeah. So Okay, good. You're welcome, pal, but we hope you're each buying your own copies. <laughs> <laughs> another, another sales tax. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys better be buying separate ones, damn it. It's like my grandpa. God, no shit. You guys I can buy it too. <laughs> <laughs> my grandpa's a cheap ass. <laughs> Was a cheap. Oh. Buy your, is that all he wrote? Yep, what a that's dick. it. <laughs> this guy wrote him a fucking book, <laughs> and he's like, buy two copies. Because <laughs> they're going to be worth twice what they are now. Yeah, well, more than twice, because they were like 20 cents back then. Oh, yeah. Now they're worth at least $2. <laughs> it's gone up 200%. Or, yeah. Oh, Stanley Dick. <laughs> that's what we should call this uh, true believers true believers uh, Stanley's a dick <laughs> he kind of is but yeah you know I wonder like um, like I, I I don't know if you've heard recently but like I guess they killed off Spider-Man yeah I saw did that. you hear, hear how that. like it's not like I would have been fine if someone just shot him but like the storyline makes no sense apparently uh, from my understanding, that he switched brains with Doc Ock. Or, that's or so like stupid. That. I, I know. Like, I mean, 
That's a, that's the other thing with Marvel. It's like, can't you just fucking kill someone off right. like normal? Like, like not only that, but like the whole Mary Jane thing. They couldn't have a divorce, so <laughs> instead, Spider Man had to do deal a, do a deal with the devil Mephisto to change reality so that the Clone Saga doesn't exist. And it's like, you know, you guys could just write better. Right, right. Or just <laughs> I mean, think you know, a little like, harder. I, like, Marvel really sucks nowadays. And I wonder, like, if Stan, I wonder if he reads this stuff and he, like, I, like, I think it either goes like this, where he's like, man, they're really fucking my shit up nowadays. <laughs> or he's Good thinking, Stanley. or he's thinking, wow, I sure am making a lot of money off this crap. <laughs> <laughs> this crap that I just pulled out of Steve Ditko's ass years ago. <laughs> Got all the credit for it. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, it makes you wonder, like, back back in these days, you know, he's always worried about making money, it seems like. Do, do you think he thought it would last this long? I doubt comics it. Would be going I doubt this it. I, I bet he thought that... I bet he thought Spider-Man would run until, like, the late 70s or early 80s. I mean, that would be, like, something, you know... Something that would be neat to know what he really thought about that. Right, right. So, and like, he's probably touched upon it, but I, I don't watch everything Stanley's ever done. Or no, because usually he's just going to give you the same old salesman yeah. pitchy bullshit. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Although he is fun. To, like, we're picking on him, but yeah. he, like, created this wonderful Marvel world. Right, right. Like, I mean, we're, we're this is all in good fun, of course. Exactly, exactly. Don't. Settle down. D- don't send us hate mails. Yeah, I'm not putting my email on here. So I'll put yours, James. <laughs> you do <dork>. work. <laughs> um, here's a short one from Joey Polozola, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Dear Jan, dear Jan, dear Stan and Jack, I think that I think that the thing is the most talked about character in your mags, and I would like to ask a few questions about him. When the thing works out, does that help his strength any? Is the thing vulnerable to gunfire? <laughs> Why didn't he ever start these responses like, no, stupid. <laughs> you fuck. They're just fucking comics. It's a fucking comic book. We you make idiot. shit up as we go. <laughs> You're overthinking <laughs> it. <laughs> Here's his response. No, Joey. <laughs> Working out doesn't help the thing's strength. Only his agility. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It keeps him from getting muscle bound, and while he can survive an attack by a small bore weapon, such as a twenty-two, a larger caliber sh- caliber shell might put a old bash bashful Ben <laughs> Benjamin out of action. Wow, touche. <laughs> I guess. You got served, dude. <laughs> Joey. You got served, Joey. You piece of shit. shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, here's, here's a really long one. Dear Stan and Jack, I wish to compliment you on your magazines. They are the best on the market today. Don Milliken, Cocker Springs Road, <laughs> in Goodlesville, Tennessee. He printed that one. Yeah. Like anything to just boost their ego. Yeah. And, Ah, that's what we like. Short, sweet music to our shell-like ears. What the hell does that mean? I, I don't know. He's... <laughs> I wonder what? if like this stuff is like lingo from the 60s that we don't get. Or like he was an old man back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, How old is, is he lingo. now? He's oh, like 90. Oh, jeez. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Here's another one from Alan Hayworth from, oh, Wilson, Kansas. Ooh. We're from Kansas. Yes, we are. All right, here we go. Dear Stan and Jack, I think you two have the best super cosmic, radioactive, self-devised, mutant shooting, growing, legendary heroes in the world. (laughs) Wow. I like this guy. (laughs) (laughs) But how about discontinuing your two-part stories and mags like Tales to Astonish, Journey into Mystery, Strange Tales, etc.? and try a two-part story in the FF, Spider-Man, X-Men, etc. I'd like to see Captain America in his own comic. Those new powers of Seuss are swell and original. I think Doctor Doom is okay, but please space his appearances out a little, as just this year you have had him in FF number... Uh, let's see, it looks like 8, 
16, 17, 23, and in Spider-Man number 5. Now, the whole subject of my letter is to ask you to change the wasp costume the way it wa is now... <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry, I can't even get through this. <laughs> change the wasp costume the way it is now makes her look bald-headed. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I think Stan should have said. <laughs> well, Alan, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's what, he, here's what was written back. As a matter of fact, we've been considering a new headpiece for the Wasp ourselves, Al. So don't be too surprised. <laughs> Good one, Stan. You know, what's funny. Um, you know, I'll, actually, he has... <laughs> Weird as this is, he does bring up a lot of good points. Like right. the wasp, by the way, we just talked about how Ant Man went through like Ant Man, Giant Man, so many different right. personas. The wasp has a new costume like every fucking week. Okay. Like these two characters, and the wasp ends up being a pretty good character later on, but these two characters just like blue. Mm. <laughs> but um, literally, um, going. Uh, Everyone keeps talking about uh, Sue Storm's new powers, right? Which I'm sure you, you know. Like at this, originally, all she could do was turn invisible, because she was a girl and she was weak. Right. That was the Marvel. <laughs> that was the Marvel uh, uh, modus operandi for uh, women. Right. Give them the crappiest powers, like in all of them. You've got Sue Storm who just turns invisible. Like whoopty shit. You yeah. Know? I mean, let, that's cool, but like everyone else. Like, her brother can fucking shoot fire. And like, fly. Yeah. Uh, like, and then uh, you have... Um, then you have uh, Marvel Girl, Jean Grey from uh, X-Men, who, like, later on becomes really powerful. And you'd think telekinesis would be, like, really powerful. You would, yeah. But for some reason, they keep calling her the weakest member. <laughs> like, like, it's like... All right, no, Angel's the weakest member. All he can do is fly slowly. You know who can fly fast? Thor, and he can do other things. Right. So, I mean, and, and then, of course, hero. you have the Wasp and uh, fucking Avengers, and then later you get Scarlet Witch, who, like Jean Grey, is really powerful, but for some reason they keep calling her the weakest member. And it's like, she can, like, look at you and... I don't know. Do something bad. Mess you like, up. Like, yeah, she's got weird powers, but it, it's like it's like they there's this theme where women in these comics are just like pathetic, and right. they're always crying. And they get better. <laughs> like like once Black Widow comes along, they start getting better. And I think I think they kind of I think they kind of realized um, that they were they were slightly misogynistic and even here right away like by giving um and actually all of them with the exception of the wasp become uh more powerful as time right, goes on right. and like right here sue storm she now has the power to um she can control like light wavelengths or something and can make right. like uh force fields which is why she turns invisible because of light or something i don't know but anyway she's like she ends up being more powerful than the rest of the Fantastic Four combined, which I think is their way of agree, of acknowledging that um, their uh, their treatment of women in comics is not always um, <laughs> um, the best. Right. Well, back to this guy's letter. I always find it fascinating. Like fans of anything can write in to any a TV show, <coughs> comic book, whatever. And have like a sense of here's what you need to do. Yeah. And like, yeah. I'd be like, no, I created this. This is what I'm gonna do. You can take your your suggestions and shove them up your ass. Well, go on fucking YouTube oh, and God. you'll see uh, like everyone's like like you can't even go to like a video game trailer and they're like the new Resident Evils need to be like the old ones and the, <laughs> right. Like, like, fuck off. Like, go play the old ones again. And yeah. That's why they're there. I mean, I, I, it, there, there is definitely room for a forum for nerds to bitch, but they're, like, they're definitely... Because, cause, you know, I mean, there, there's always got to be room for, like, critique. Right. But, like, there has to come a point where it's, like, just stop bitching. Right. You know? But I also... You can also see it as, like, a way to, you know, for Stan and Jack, you know, we're doing this... 
what are the consumer thinking? You know, which yeah. what direction do they want us to take it? So I can also see it as that. And, and I think that's what they did a lot. Yeah. Because um, you know, like I I've noticed as I've been reading these how like a lot of these fan letters end up like a lot of it seems like they do take a lot of these ideas into right, account. Right. Like they do make changes. Well, I think, uh, man, we've really kind of rambled on a lot. And this, <laughs> yeah. This was definitely, I think we're definitely going to get something started here. Right. Um, well, that's what a podcast is, is rambling. Exactly. Just we we like, just don't have, like, any celebrities or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, Enrique. Oh, thank you. Enrique for coming out. Um, he, uh, uh, hopefully we can get you, we'll probably have you on quite a bit. Right, um, right. Because I've got the equipment. Yeah. So. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> well, you you know all the weird shit about old comics that I have no idea what you're talking about half the time. But, yeah. But I'm learning. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, I mean, you're definitely, I, I mean, let's not go crazy. Like, you're definitely a nerd yourself. It's yeah, just okay. these old ones that, like. Right. That's your area of expertise. Yeah. So. Like, the new ones, I'm kind of, I'm kind of out of the loop on. On those, like you I quit buying the new Fifty Two. Like right. right, I right. need to stop because I'm broke as it is. So, <laughs> but uh, speaking of new Fifty Two and speaking of comics, um, you know, uh, if you want to check out any of these, um, a lot of times they do have old comics, especially from the '60s, just at your local comic book shop. Oh, um, definitely. Here in Wichita, we've got Prairie Dog Comic. That's one that we tend to go to a lot. It's yeah. on uh, West Douglas. Is that correct? Maple. Maple. Yeah. It's on West Maple. Just right across the street from Town West. From Wichita. Ta- okay. We're in Wichita, Kansas, by the yes. way. So. Uh, there's another one. It's, um, uh, what is that? It's out South Pawnee. And yeah, Pawnee it's on First South Street Pawnee. South. I've never uh, been to I'm that. Trying, I have. It's uh, it's pretty good. Um, I'm trying to plug them, and I can't think of the name. <laughs> um, it's like called the Dungeon or Dungeon something. Dungeon. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out for the next show. Sorry. There's another one on the east side. I think they're more of a game shop, but it's called... Um, they do have a few comics. It's called um, Hero Complex. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can check this stuff out there. Um, you can always read the weird fan mail. There's oh, they always put even on the the newer ones. There's fan mail and all these. And oh yeah, it's fun to see. I wish they would put a section of hate mail. Yeah, just hate. Just just, just <laughs> you're ruining Batman. You're ruining Fantastic Four. How die. can you? How can you do this to Mary Jane? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, this has definitely been fun. We're going to try to do this, um, at least try to get the one in uh, once a week. Right, right. Um, Our hectic schedules. Yeah. <laughs> we barely got this one done. <laughs> well, this is, uh, once again, this is James Heyer and Enrique Ramirez um, with True Believers. Um, until next time, Excelsior.